What's up, everyone? That was an unusually long intro. <laughs> this is Down to Earth Talk. I am your host, Danny Ely. I don't normally say my last name, though. <laughs> Snap. Um, sitting next to me, um, you guys may remember, we have Chris Cheek. What's up, y'all? Corey. Hello. Have you ever been? Yes, um, once before. Oh, okay. We talked about buffets. <laughs> <laughs> the important topics that we talk about on Down to Earth Talk buffets. Um, but we today are, we're actually waiting for Sherry to get here. Um, she's bringing our, our guest, um, our guest, Miss TT. All right. But I don't think it's a TT we know. No. Because no. she lives in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so we were, we were, we were going to talk about relationships and, and, uh, and yeah, relationships. Chris and Corey are married. Um, if you couldn't tell in their voice, <laughs> 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 they're married to each to other. To each other. <laughs> <laughs> Not just in generally married. Um, and and uh, you guys have a lot of experience working with couples and, and, and people in relationship building and et cetera. Please tell me about that. Yeah, Corey, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, I hear a lot of times where people want to talk and express that in relationships, it needs to be 50-50. Oh, this is a good point. I got to give 50-50. And whoever's not giving their full 50, you know, they're not in the relationship with yeah. everything. But yeah, Can I tell you really quick? I talked to a couple the other day, and I use this 50-50 example. Because <laughs> I told you about it, huh? Yeah, and I asked the, I asked the, uh, the, the guy, how much, how much do you put into the relationship? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, 50-50. Like, you know, how much do you put in? He's like, oh, I'm not doing that much. Maybe, uh, maybe like 10%. <laughs> oh, and, <laughs> and then, drop the and then when I asked the girl, two. she said, I don't know where you got 10% from. It's like more like a point and a half. <laughs> oh, oh, <no. laughs> so, <laughs> so with the 50, 50, like you did, cause I was talking to you about it this yeah. week, but your relationships can't be 50, 50. What the do you mean? What? The relationship, That's what I've always been told. The relationship needs to be you're all in and they're all in and it needs to be a hundred percent not just stopping at oh you know i'm going to give a little bit of energy or concern or effort but it's got to be we're both you know especially in marriage right we're both into it a hundred percent right no matter what happens so what does what does that look like what does a hundred percent look like <laughs> i think you were ready me, to say something until uh, he pointed to you and then you froze <laughs> For me, it's about making sure that I put his needs above my own. Yeah. Always. And so, um, so my, my husband comes first always, even, even above my kids, mm -hmm. you know, my husband comes first. Not that my kids needs aren't met. They're met. They're happy. They're fed. They have a roof over their heads, but, um, but to make sure that, I don't know, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another thing that can be very destructive in a relationship is, uh, if you get into an argument, you've got to decide, okay, are we going to argue or are we going to resolve the situation mm -hmm. and, and allow the, the conflict to be the thing that grows us together? Because it's so easy for individuals to be like, okay, I'm going to have all my ammunition right, ready to just unload. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to unload. Women the are better at that. Oh, yeah. We'll oh, talk yeah. about that later. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, I don't know. She's mad at me for something. Last Tuesday at 2 o'clock, <laughs> you didn't take the trash out and... Yeah. yeah. that Women. That's the big break right there, right? Yeah. It's the trash. No. No, but <laughs> to have your record of wrongs, sort of say, or your list of everything that that person has done to you that was a negative effect, it's it's not right. It, it, it's just not right to throw in someone's face something that they did or didn't do years ago and allow them to live over that or beyond that. Right. To continue to let something like that. Well, what about when that stuff, that, that, type, that type of thing hasn't been resolved though? Well, it depends on the situation, I guess. Like what, what is the resolve you're looking for? You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess I'd need to understand the question a little better, but I think that it depends on the situation. Like, um, like if I'm arguing with Chris and we we are upset about something with each other, then um, 
then I'm not going to argue with him just to make my point. We're going to we're going to have we're going to have a discussion to get to to an end, right? right? So it's not about like there shouldn't be something that goes unresolved. Right. If it goes unresolved, then then we have a big problem. So you're basically arguing on purpose, right? With a purpose, it's not, even I, really not arguing. on purpose. I but wouldn't even with call it purpose. arguing. It would be like it would be like here's how I feel, and this is why this is why this upsets me. Okay, well I'm sorry that that upset you. Here's how I feel, and you know like. It, yeah. To come to a conclusion, you're drawing, right. you're coming back to a conclusion. I think that's, I think that's a huge thing is you have to come to a conclusion when you have disagreements or arguments because so easily you can just like decide, okay, well, let's just let this pass and let's get back to good place. But when there's no resolution, there's no, you, there's change. no conclusion, there's no resolution, then yeah, Sherry, there's no change. Yeah. I'm glad you've been here this whole time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I, I was. <laughs> I, I was listening in the radio. On, in the radio. <laughs> in the radio. <laughs> I was, radio. In the radio. I was listening. Uh, no, in, in the car. <laughs> so yeah, but so the record of wrongs. I mean, just that whole thing to, to throw it over somebody and and not get to the resolve where you can live beyond it. Okay, so I am. This is this is counseling for me right okay. now because I got an issue. Right. Okay. Okay. So I have this problem in relationships where I am a fixer. Maybe that's because I'm a dude. Maybe that's I'm Bob thing. the Builder. I'm a fixer, right? So if I get an argument with my fiance, I love saying that. <laughs> um, if I get an argument with my fiance, um, it takes me about 4.9 seconds when like, she's upset with me for me to start wanting to fix that problem. And then I frustrate her all over again because I'm like, why won't you just let me fix this? <laughs> Well, congratulations <laughs> on your recent engagement. Thank you. Woo woo, Danny. Thank you. You I go. I have that on video on my phone. Probably everybody does. Yeah. I have it on video on my phone too. It's, it's on, on Facebook. Facebook. It's I on mean, Facebook. it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. You guys got a shout out and all that good stuff. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. On so, a relationship blo blog. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, what was the point? He, the, he wants to know how... How I what, can better resolve... Uh, uh, how I can be a better at fixing maybe, things. Maybe you should just stop and say, all right, Nini, so are you wanting me to help you fix this or do you just need someone to listen? Right. Until you learn her well enough to know right. when she really just wants you to listen and when she needs you to help her fix it. Yeah. Or if you cause a situation, she could be... Oh, wait a minute. You're going to cause it and fix it in the same breath? Yeah. What does that make sense? So she needs time to <laughs> calculate what you've said or done, so she has time to let it go. Let, let it, it go. go. I don't and know another if that's thing, true. Another big thing is the, something we learned. Another couple like taught us when we were just dating, and so we learned it really early, is that because um, we used to fight really bad all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I remember those we days. We would say... <laughs> We would say, okay, I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? And yes. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I yes, remember. I you. Like, you have to give me an answer you, if you're going to forgive me. Forgiving is – forgiving, that can be kind of instantaneous. Right. But then you would say, okay, so do you restore me? Right. So that's different than forgiving because forgiveness is, okay, I forgive that. That's done. And restoring is putting you back into that same place that you were before. And sometimes I would have to say no. I'm right. not ready to restore you yet. I'm right. still mad. You know, I have you got to give me a minute well, or two. I like this it's like the Dr. Cheek show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the next edition of Dr. Cheek because I have a question for you, Dr. Oh, Cheek. Boy, okay. Here we go. Call us, <laughs> please call in. No, no, call in. Yeah. Oh, as a matter of fact, if you do have a relationship yeah. question, 888-909-1050. We'll yeah. give it a hero's try. Yeah. So I have a question. What if, you know, you have a couple and they have a situation where there's a particular partner and they keep doing the same things over and over and over and over and over. And they just say, you know what, I just am stupid. And they say that, but, and you, for, you really want to forgive them forward, but it's the same major issue all the time. What are you supposed to do with something like that? So it comes back to the depth of the issue. If it's if it's marital unfaithfulness, I mean, there's only a certain extent that you're able to do on that. But if it's the small things that are like, okay, you left the toothpaste cap off the toothpaste. Like, you got to decide, is this going to be the hill that I die on? Is this, is this the mountain that I'm like, 
this has got to change. This is this is it. Otherwise, you know, a lot of times I know that people marry other people or get involved in relationships with the potential of what that person could become. And that's so unfair to say, oh, I got together with you because I thought someday you would change mm -hmm. in what I wanted to form you into. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did that answer your question? I, I well, think... Go ahead. I think that um, I think that it depends on the depth of the issue too. Like I agree with Chris that if it's like if it's like um, every time you take the trash out, you forget to put the trash liner oh. back in. That's oh. that's one thing. But if it's a, a marital like unfaithfulness issue, like um, repentance isn't just um, I'm sorry. Repentance means to completely 180 turn away from that. And if they're coming to you saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, and they're still doing it, then there's a heart issue, and they're not really sorry. Because the proof is in the pudding, right? Mm -hmm. And he's, he, she, whoever it is, is not really sorry, because that would affect change. Right. My mom used to always say, Mama used to always say, <laughs> She'd say, like. don't say sorry if you're not really sorry. Mm -hmm. She'd be like, don't say sorry because if you're sorry, you wouldn't have done it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you're like, you can't win with that, mom. Yeah. <laughs> I can't win with that argument. Yeah, it comes to the point, I think it's just like, you know, I can see both sides of the spectrum. Like right. a, a toothpaste cap is not off of the thing that's not a big deal and that's not like mm -hmm. gonna affect you long term some for some people it can be if if they walk into a room and and it's unorganized i mean that's like you know and in that you got to decide do i care more about the relationship or do i care about winning the argument yeah because some people are dominant and they're steamrollers i'm just going to steamroll whatever you're wanting to say because it's more important for me to win yeah, Ely has a question. No, no, oh, I was boy. agreeing that that's who oh, I am. Oh, I'm a steamroller. You're a steamroller? Yeah. You just... Boom. I can. I have to I have to stop myself from that. Well, like if you're saying, it's so easy for me to realize the situation. For, for Corey and I, sometimes Corey will give me a phone call and she'll say, hey, all this is going on and this and this and this and this. And I'll, I'll, <laughs> I have to go, okay, does she want me to listen right now? Because it's really easy for me to figure out how to deal with this and that's just pick up the phone and make the phone call and for her it's not just a phone call it's i'm dealing with this the kids are doing this we've got this going on and my whole world and i don't function or operate in that moment right i i'm like like you you're I'm on fixer. you're on the phone i you're on the phone. Uh, you're having a wonderful peaceful day at work with no problems and no issues and then you get a phone call and you're like all right do that then. <laughs> but she doesn't necessarily just want me to steamroll that and say, well, I'll just fix it for you. That right. it, I, I know there's been times where Corey is like, I don't want you to fix it. That's not what I want. I just want you to know everything that's going on. Yeah, I learned with my younger, I'm the oldest of six kids, and I learned that uh, at, as they got older, and of course I got older too, I noticed I still tried to be their big sister. Now, there's nothing ever is going to take away the fact that I'm no. your big sister. But the bossy part of it, like eat your vegetables, or, you, you know, you asked for that second helping and you will sit at the table and eat that food because you got the second helping. And, you know, there's starving kids in Africa that could eat that, <laughs> you know, and I could go on and on and on about that. So, uh, but I learned about probably about six years ago, my all my sisters sat me down and they said, Sherry, this is how we feel. We're adults now. So you don't constantly need to come in here telling us what to do. I took that to heart, and I was like, oh, yeah, uh -huh. I'm sorry that I did that. Okay. So what I did was completely shut down. Oh. Like, I'm like, oh, you don't want that, and I want to respect you because right. we're not, you're not five anymore, and I'm not, you know, 15 trying to get you ready for school right. and all those kind of things. So I backed off, and then months go by, and they're like, why don't you tell us what to do anymore? I'm like, you said you didn't want me to. And they're like, well, we didn't mean completely. We just meant like, you know, not all the time. Tell us, give us a five-point sermon on, on what it is that we're doing and why we shouldn't be doing it. And I'm like, but you said you didn't want me to. So every time now when they come to me and ask me things, I'll listen. And then there's this, like, pause. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, and so I ask now, are you just telling me something or would you like me to respond? Because I can do both. 
but you tell me what you want, and then we'll go from there. You know, they did. You learned a valuable lesson in this, and, and this is like my wife's mantra, I would say. She loves to say it. What, what am I going to say? No, I got it from Dr. Phil. Oh, okay. Dr. I love Dr. Dr. Phil. Phil. He says that you teach people how to treat you. <clears throat> And what you let them get away with is what they think is okay with you. So when you finally draw a boundary and say, okay, that is my boundary, then people, well, they will try to test the boundary. But once they realize this is your boundary, then you stop crossing it, right? And mm -hmm. you may set a boundary with you, right? Yeah. That's what you're going to yeah, say? Yeah, exactly. So then you go, oh, okay, I'm not going to cross that boundary anymore. And then they want to blur the boundary a little, right? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and so I mean, like, you're kind of confused because they dropped and said, here's the line, don't cross it. And then they, you know, they kind of came back to you saying, well, we actually kind of liked it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, because then one of them said, well, I still look at you as my mom. And I was like, well, honey, I'm not your mom. I mean, I just called you honey. But I'm not, I'm not your mom. <laughs> I'm your here, sister. Sweetie. And, you know, I, but I love you. So if, there, if you come to me, just be clear with me what you want. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't, you're an adult and I respect. But see, you're setting boundaries then when you do that. So it's so important to tell people like, I don't like to be treated this way. Yeah. You I know? have this distant family member that has a tendency to uh, utilize the herbs of the ground. <laughs> 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 Did I say that politically correct? Yes, okay. Yes. And so like he used to get offended. He didn't want to come around me. I'm like, dude, that's your life. Like, I, I don't agree that that's healthy but you know if that's what you want to do i'll get a contact that's cool you know it's just like whatever you know i don't judge you for that you know that's your lifestyle and um you know i i'm cool i'm not gonna judge you so go on and do what you need to do i'm cool <laughs> it's the just least productive idea to do it's, what <laughs> it's one of the least productive things to do yeah, it is but if that's how he chooses until the light bulb that's comes what you're gonna roll head, then you know, just don't, you know, try to keep it away from the kids, you know, like don't come around like we're all getting contacts, you know, just like, <laughs> just, I don't mind, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's oh a joke. Goodness. I'm just kidding. Secretly, right. you're not yeah. really kidding. No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do nothing wrong. You know what? I, I, one of my favorite relationship advice things that I, I used over and over and over in this uh, counseling session I had with this couple the other day was expect less and appreciate, appreciate more. more. Yep. Like if. If we could do that, and that's, I mean, across the board, 100% every relationship you're in, if you can expect less and appreciate more from someone, whether that's your boss, your employee, your kids, your parents, your next door neighbor, I, I mean, any relationship, that's that's a huge advantage. What's the, bring bring more definition to the appreciating and expecting why don't you do that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? You counsel them. Cause, yeah, because yeah. I got to put you on the corner like you did me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, the, the, the specific, I'll, I'll get into vague specifics. Um, the, the lady in the relationship didn't feel like the guy in the relationship um, was able to provide for her the things that, she expected him to provide for because again we we talked about earlier in the show we talked we said something about how you um you meet someone and you have expectations of who they'll become and sometimes in love relationships oh, you yeah. fall the, in love with somebody of be. the potential they could be sometimes in those type of relationships we present ourselves way better than we actually yeah. are always right yeah. always. we're always putting like dating relationships suck because you have to spend the first three months getting to know the the idea of the person that they want to present to you and then you get to know the real person and it's so hard to like really get to know somebody in that scenario when you're when you're trying to put your best foot forward and you're trying to put the person that you want to be so that's what this had happened this guy had done that right put the best foot forward of who he wanted to be what he wanted to be and then when the realization that that wasn't who he really was was coming to terms then she's saying well this is who you said you want to be this is what i expect from you this these are the things and it was simple stuff like you know take me to get my nails done once a month right <laughs> Like oh, one, simple, by myself. simple, right? Well, yeah. pay for it. Pay for, pay oh, for it. God, <laughs> God, okay. Um, so simple stuff, or or, um, you know, take me to get my hair done. You know, once once every couple of months, so that I can feel, you know, like you appreciate what I'm putting into this relationship as well. And 
um, he was at a point where he's like, well, I'm not working. I, I can't. I don't, I don't make that much at work. I, you know, I got cut back or this or that. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to excel in this and this. So I had to break down with him, with him on the subject how much it would cost to get her nails and hair done her nails done once a month and her hair done twice a month. And I was like, let's break that down to a daily average. How much do you have to make every single day to put in an envelope and put away for something like that so that she can feel appreciated in that way? Right. Oh, okay. It's not that much. So can you make that much? And can you put that away? Can you save? Can you, cause a lot of it came down to finances and budgeting and how we're spending our money, our money. And then our individual money is right. a huge problem. Um, but then with her, it was, well, why don't you appreciate the things that he is doing? Why don't you appreciate the things where he's trying? You have to appreciate more of what he is doing and expect have less expectation on him of what you think he should be accomplishing or what he presented to you that he would be. And your relationship is going to be a lot better because you're going to be starting to focus on the positive aspects of your partner rather than the negative. So when you expect you are focusing on what, what, um, what's you're, you're putting your, you're putting your eggs in a basket of, of what potentially could be there. Mm -hmm. But when you appreciate your, you're looking at the things that are already there and you're building that person based on those things. Well, I don't know if I'm off key here. And okay. You, Corey, I give you permission to smack me because if these guys <laughs> smack me, I'll smack them back, but I won't smack you back because you're my friend. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. I take what you say. It's okay. just whatever you want to tell me because okay. shit. And in my mind, I, I don't know. It's just like, a woman should be able to do her own hair, hair and nails. Right. I mean, like, if he wants to do it, awesome. But I don't know. Like, I, I was listening about 50-50 when you were coming in. You know, like, yeah, I like that. 100-100. <laughs> Keep it hunted. You know, that's what the kids say. <laughs> Keeping it hunted. So, uh, like, some things I think about. Like, in my, we had this girl group at my church, and we had, like, five things we all were looking for in a man. Uh, that they, It's called the ship and the shuns. So you have to have a real relationship. This is for both parts, not just for the man, not just the woman, but this is like for both of you. If a man's looking, this is what he can do too. Real relationship with God mm -hmm. and education, transportation, motivation, occupation. So if you had those, it was kind of like a pre-application to date me. You could get my number. <laughs> if you didn't have those, even if one was missing, we were just tired of the games. So we decided well, that's just not someone that we want to accept in our life. Not that they're not worthy but if they get their act together then they could possibly have my money because you ain't going to pick me up on a bus you ain't gonna you shouldn't be living with your mama at the age of 35 i'm sorry just shouldn't be that if you have to live that way then you know i understand circumstances are just like different and you know you do what you got to do but if you have no motivation then how in the heck am i supposed to motivate me and you you got to mm -hmm. get have your stuff together and then if you don't have an education then how are we going to sit down really i mean not not a four-year college education but just some basic i know how to read i know how to do math i know how to get the basic done the basics done so we decided to go that route and but we were whole as we were 100 percent prepared and ready i could pay for my own hair my own right. nails but right. if that's my love language things then that is, you know, I mean, if a person wants to speak my love language, which things isn't my thing, but, you know, if that's how it was, then I understand that's just their love language. Right. So, but doesn't that sound kind of shallow, though, if a yeah, woman just wants 100%. to? Yeah, 100%. Well, completely agree. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, like, you, you were kind of hitting on it, and when Danny was talking about it, it came to me, and then he's kept talking, and then I forgot, and now I remember. So, <laughs> um, I when, have that effect. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, um, when we counsel people, we always go back to the five love languages, and you hit on that. And gifts, honestly, I'm like it may sound shallow, but gifts is one of my love languages. But it's not necessarily about go buy me stuff and spend money on me. But it's about I need to know that when you're not with me, I need like no, tangible proof that you were thinking about me when you weren't with me because I think about you all day long. Yeah. Right. And I need to know that you thought about me. And, and it speaks to me. I go, oh, he brought me home a Snickers bar, and he knows that's my favorite. That's the sweetest cents. thing ever. Yeah. It doesn't cost a lot. Yeah. Or, um, and then, like, Chris is his physical touch. He, he, he knows I love him when I hug him and I hold his hand. and Other not, things. <laughs> other things. Not, not, not business. <laughs> <laughs> Married time. <laughs> Married time. There you go. You know, um, so it's important to know, and I would encourage – 
people to get that book, The yeah. Five Langu- Love Languages yeah. by Gary Chapman, um, to know what your love language is and, and how you speak that, how you receive love and how you give love and how your partner receives love and gives love. It's important to know how he receives love because he would appreciate that better than if he, his love language isn't gifts, but here I'm trying to shower him with gifts and he's like, gee, thanks, because he doesn't care. Then like it, I'm feeling empty now because here I'm trying to speak my language to him and that's not what he receives. Got it. Yeah. And and just just if you don't have the money to buy the love languages, you can go to a library and rent it. Um, and no, you can go to their a, website. And yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They is have a quiz. There's, on there's their a website. quiz on their website. I mean, the the book is the details about how to how what that means, what the love languages mean specifically. And but why? if you just want to find out mm-hmm. what your love language is, you can go take that quiz. And I would say, ninety nine percent of the people that I've, you know talk to about that that have taken that quiz have seen exactly you know they're, they're like yeah that's totally me mm-hmm. yeah and you know this applies uh, i've just been harping on this lately. this applies to kids too yeah, yeah. they have a kids one yeah the kids uh, and yeah. i've just seen lately i don't know what like why i'm seeing all this but i've seen so many kids disrespected i just want to duct tape the parents to a wall somewhere right. i really do and i go into a school and they're you know out in the plain open checking these kids heads for you know stuff for in lo- their heads and for, stuff and for bugs yeah like in public like yeah. that's embarrassing i walked in and i just looked at it i looked at the people and she explained to me what they're doing i'm like don't you think that's rather disrespectful don't shouldn't you do that somewhere private so other public doesn't come in and see just kids i just want to and then i've heard parents lately just totally blasting on their kids calling them oh, lazy wow. calling them, yeah you know i'm just like so sick of it i'm so sick of hearing that because kids deserve respect yeah. tt's not here because okay. i showed up and uh she was like uh can i go next time and i'm like fine <laughs> but i want you to know that i kept my word so tt angelique and kira if you're listening i kept my word i showed up but I believe that that speaks volumes yeah, yeah. in a world. Well, in our work, in, in, in our business, right with ATAP. Yeah. Um, if you want more information about ATAP, you can see us on Facebook or go to our website atap-us.org. Um, <laughs> you have to throw it in that little legalese commercial, right? You're really good at that, Danny. Um, in our world, <laughs> like one of the things that I'm constantly talking to our staff about is there's three things that every kid needs, and that's. Um, um, un, uh, what is the word? Un, unconditional, unconditional love. Thank you. Um, consistency and then, um, Except respect. Or yeah. yeah. That, that you're going to be there, that you're going to be consistent and you're going to be there when you say you're going to be there. And that's like and a human thing. Right. But it's missing in today's world. Yes. People are just so ex- expectation of it's, oh, well, oh, well. Yeah. I guess it's, oh, well. And that's what makes us different, is, or it should make us different as Christians, that we keep our word. Yeah. We do what we say. And in relationships, I don't think it's any different. If someone says, the way you're acting hurts me, they should address it, accept responsibility for it, and change it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because otherwise, is there respect in the relationship? I don't That's see a good it. question. The music's playing. You don't hear it because no. you don't have headphones. Oh, hey. Okay. Music's playing. Take it away. So we'll see you next week. All right. Down to Earth Talk. All right. This is 1050 AM KCAA Loma Linda and 106.5 FM Yukaipa. Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. I'm Seth Everett. The Golden State Warriors against the Philadelphia 76ers should be a mismatch. Well, the Warriors needed Harrison Barnes' three-pointer with .4 seconds left to pull out a 108-105 victory over the Sixers. Meanwhile, Toronto, en route to their 11th straight victory, has a 77-72 lead over Detroit in the third. The Brooklyn